Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Samir Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday at Sakhir Palace His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, who is currently visiting the kingdom for the inauguration ceremony of the UK Naval Support Facility. Prince Andrew conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of both Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland and the UK Crown Prince, Prince Charles, who wished the people of Bahrain prosperity and advancement. His Majesty the King welcomed Prince Andrew and his accompanying delegation and asked him to convey his greetings to Her Majesty the Queen and the UK Crown Prince. His Majesty expressed pride in the friendly relations and historical cooperation that bind the two kingdoms, affirming that these ties continue to witness development in all fields. His Majesty highlighted the mutual keenness to strengthen these distinguished relations and enforcing them in a manner that would benefit the two countries and their people. In the framework of military cooperation between the two countries, His Majesty the King praised the opening of the British Naval Support Facility in Mina Salman, which supports the efforts of the International Coalition to counter terrorism, which is made of 60 countries in order to secure freedom of navigation and international trade. His Majesty continued to hail the pivotal role played by the United Kingdom and its positive contributions to the service of regional and global security and stability in the light of current changes and challenges. His Majesty reviewed with his Andrew ways of developing bilateral cooperation in the economic, trade and cultural sectors, commending the efforts of the Duke of York in bolstering ties between the two kingdoms. His Majesty the King held a dinner banquet in the honor of His Royal Highness the Duke of York. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday visited the Bahrain Defence Forces Mina Salman base to join with the Duke of York, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, in officially opening the UK Naval Support Facility NSF. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Commander-in-Chief of the BDF Field Marshal, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi as well as a number of senior BDF officers. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stressed the close relations and cooperation with international partners and allies and remains an essential component of Bahrain's comprehensive development program led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to note that the opening of the NSF represents an important milestone in Bahrain's support for the international campaign against terrorism, protecting international maritime corridors and securing global trade. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince noted that defense cooperation between the two countries has played a pivotal role in ensuring global stability and peace for over 90 years and highlighted that the establishment of the NSF is a clear indication of the strength of the relations between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also praised His Majesty King Hamad's continued support towards the bilateral relationship which has served to deepen the friendship and cooperation across a range of areas. The ceremony began with the playing of the national anthems of both countries followed by an inspection of the Guard of Honor. His Royal Highness the Duke of York delivered a speech in which he highlighted the role of His Majesty the King and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in strengthening bilateral relations and noted that the NSF will serve the common interests of both countries. His Royal Highness the Duke of York emphasized both countries' eagerness to further develop the horizon of cooperation and expressed confidence in the growing partnership between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. Finally, His Royal Highness the Duke of York wished every success to the maritime arms in both kingdoms. Also speaking at the ceremony was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who noted that the launch of the NSF marks a new chapter in a defense relationship that has cemented ties between the two kingdoms. His Excellency affirmed that the strong partnership between the Royal Navy and the Royal Bahrain Naval Force forms an important component of bilateral ties between the two nations. The opening ceremony concluded with an inspection tour of the NSF facilities and the unveiling of a plaque by the Royal Highnesses to mark the occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa inspected the new fleet of national carrier Gulf Air with the arrival of the first Boeing 787 aircraft within the new fleet at Sakhir Air Base. His Royal Highness was received by the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, a number of senior officials and Gulf Air Board members. His Royal Highness affirmed the continuous support towards developing priority sectors that reinforce performance and economic return on the basis of sustainability and competitiveness, including the logistics sector, which represents an essential aspect in developing various related components, which are air transportation and civil aviation services, reinforced by the Bahrain International Airport Development Program. The Crown Prince noted the importance of strategic steps and initiatives that receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He added, 
that upgrading the fleet of Gulf Air will increase its competitiveness on the regional and global levels and will implement the futuristic comprehensive vision of Gulf Air. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of supporting the strategies that develop the performance of Gulf Air, particularly in light of the competitiveness of air transportation sector to consolidate the status of the company in the civil aviation industry sector. The Crown Prince inspected a Boeing 787 Dreamliner and was briefed on the timeline of receiving the new airplanes, which include the addition of Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A320neo. Five Boeing 787-9 Dreamliners will be added to the fleet by next year, which will support Gulf Air's development plans to fly to 50 different destinations. His Royal Highness was also briefed on the technical aspect of the Boeing 787. His Royal Highness congratulated the Gulf Air board members for the arrival of the company's first airplane with the plan to update the fleet of the national carrier. His Royal Highness expressed pride and appreciation of the Bahraini cadres of the company in implementing various programs and development plans. He expressed hope that the company will achieve more success in the light of these strategies, wishing the national carrier further success in the future. His Royal Highness, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness, the Prince Andrew, Duke of York, yesterday attended the Pitch and Palace Bahrain 1.0 event held at the Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed Al Fatih Fort in Rafah. During the event, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, noted his pride at the range of inventive pitches and ideas put forward by the 12 finalists, which reflects the level of talent, creativity, and innovation. 
that sits at the heart of Bahrain's growing community of entrepreneurs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted that the Pitch at Palace Bahrain 1.0 initiative is a shining example of how Bahrain and the United Kingdom's historic relationship continues to drive opportunities for businesses in both countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince concluded by thanking His Royal Highness the Duke of York for his friendship and support towards growing the kingdom's entrepreneurial sector. His Royal Highness the Duke of York has said it is a huge privilege to bring Pitch at Palace to Bahrain. Pitch at Palace aims to help startup businesses grow. This is done by supporting businesses to become a successful element by making connections and asking the audience to follow up with at least one entrepreneur on their ask. In remarks delivered during the event, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, the chairman of Thamkeen, noted that Pitch at Palace Bahrain 1.0 marked a fitting opportunity to celebrate innovation and entrepreneurship and to share the brilliant ideas of Bahrain's entrepreneurs with the rest of the world.
12 local entrepreneurs were selected from 99 applicants to take part in the first installment of Pitch at Palace Bahrain, which saw them each deliver a three-minute pitch to an audience comprised of experts from the worlds of entrepreneurship, technology, media and investments. Held in partnership with Tim Keen, the Pitch at Palace Bahrain initiative aims to guide and connect entrepreneurs and early-stage businesses from across the kingdom with potential supporters including CEOs, investors, mentors and business partners. I think what we saw tonight is a glimpse of the future of Bahrain. Uh, very young, very talented entrepreneurs who thought of daily activities that we take for granted and came up with solutions, practical solutions, easy solutions for us to make our life easier. For me it's, uh, it's not just uh, uh, an important event, it's, uh, it, it's a great pleasure that there is such a strong Bahraini-British link to it. Um, we already have a lot of, uh, of osmosis, a lot of uh, interrelationships between, uh, between our start-up culture in the UK and that here. Uh, and His Royal Highness the, the Duke of York established Pitch at the Palace uh, four years ago to provide a, not just a, an environment and a platform for, for young entrepreneurs but a, um, a support structure to, to help them. We have a large number of amazingly talented, exceptionally I should say talented entrepreneurs in Bahrain who have unique ideas and only need the opportunity for somebody to listen to them and give them the chance to explain their ideas and concepts, not just to be in Bahrain but even to go beyond Bahrain. The winners who were selected by audience vote included 1GCC, Get Baqala and Timarran, who are now invited to pitch at Pitch at Palace Global, which takes place in London in December of this year. What we do is we basically have a mobile app that helps people find and book a wide range of sport venues and activities and make them available for booking. Um, we help them exercise, become healthier, become happier. That's what we do. This is amazing, really. Uh, I didn't believe that I was selected. In fact, uh, it's such a great opportunity. I mean, being here is more than enough for me. The exposure that I got is more than enough. And winning is something that is really awesome. One GCC is an employment platform. Uh, we're focused on helping hiring uh, GCC nationals. And I'm, I'm very happy that we got to win today. As Actually, I think we're the first in Pitch at Palace history to win both awards, the Pitch and the People Choice Award. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. This initiative emphasizes Bahrain's commitment to becoming a leading global destination for business startups and shows just how entrepreneurs represent the backbone of the kingdom's increasingly innovative and diverse economy. Pitch at Palace provides Bahraini-based businesses with the opportunity to take their concepts to the next level and make links internationally. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Hamed. The concluding session of the 27th Arab Parliamentary Union meeting took place and the Union agreed to approve a recommendation condemning the foreign interventions in the internal affairs of Arab countries, particularly Iran's intervention in Yemen and Bahrain and its illegitimate occupation of UAE islands as well as the interventions in affairs of other Arab countries. The delegation of the parliamentary division of the meeting headed by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Mr. Ahmed bin Ibrahim al-Mullah, affirmed the importance of participating in various regional and international parliamentary meetings. The meeting resulted in a number of recommendations that would enhance Arab unity and cohesion in the face of various challenges, particularly the unwavering Arab stance on the Palestinian cause, combating terrorism and ending all forms of tensions, conflicts and violence as well as creating a common economic framework that supports the Arab economy. The Union hailed the successful efforts of Bahrain, Kuwait and Palestine in convincing the world to condemn the U.S. administration's decision on Jerusalem. During the formation of the Arab Parliamentary Union's committees which preceded the closing sessions of the conference, the delegation of the Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain was recommended to chair the Committee on Women and Children of the Union for the current session. His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, Duke of York and Honorary President of Huddersfield University visited yesterday the Ministry of Interior. On arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Chief of Public Security, Major General Tariq Al Hassan and the UK Ambassador to the Kingdom, Mr. Simon Martin were also present during the visit. The Minister of the Interior welcomed the visit of His Royal Highness Prince Andrew noting the distinguished and historical Bahrain-UK relations, which expands for more than 200 years. The minister added that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a nation of peace, tolerance and openness. 
under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Interior Minister also praised the high standard of education offered by Huddersfield University and its cooperation with the Royal Academy of Police in introducing the Master's Program in Security Science, which has been designed particularly to meet the requirements of the Royal Academy students in accordance with its advanced academic curriculum. His Royal Highness Prince Andrew and the Minister of Interior also met the students attending the Master's Program which has been introduced as part of the Royal Academy of Police's efforts to expose its officers to international police experiences, improve their leadership skills, and enable them to solve security issues effectively and at an advanced level. The program is being attended by 26 officers. In a speech given on the occasion, the Assistant Chief of Public Security for Operations and Training Affairs, Brigadier Sheikh Hamad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, affirmed that the development of the academic training to the highest standard is an important component of the ministry's efforts to develop its human capital through collaboration with international academic bodies and the creation of bespoke learning opportunities through tailored learning programs. Brigadier Sheikh Hamad went on to highlight the University of Huddersfield sport and cooperation with the Ministry of Interior, praising the level of collaboration between them. As part of his official visit to Bahrain, His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, officially inaugurated the British University of Bahrain, a joint venture between Bahrain and the University of Salford in Manchester. More details in this report with Mohammed Shaban. The British University of Bahrain was officially inaugurated on Thursday as part of His Royal Highness the Duke of York's official visit to the kingdom. The university will be welcoming in students this fall. Well, basically what we're trying to do is to bring the best of British higher education to Bahrain. We want to make it uh, possible for students in Bahrain to study for British degrees from the University of Salford without having to go to the UK. Now, of course, they can go to the UK if they want to. In fact, they can go at any stage in their program. But we also know that there are often students who would much rather uh, spend their undergraduate years um, in their country of origin. Um, so the idea is to make those opportunities available here in Bahrain. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, it's not just about undergraduate education. Um, it's fairly uh, well established in the world that British universities take their degrees to other places. The BOB is partnering with the University of Salford in Manchester. It will offer a wide range of degree programs and projects catered to the Bahraini market to help stimulate learning across a number of academic disciplines. Well, we're very excited about partnering with the British University of Bahrain because it gives us an opportunity to bring our particular version of UK university education to Bahrain. And the University of Salford has got a long history in working very closely with industry and developing graduate skills, not only a knowledge base, but a skill base that enables our graduates to really hit the ground running, be industry ready, 21st century, technologically enabled, resilient graduates. The Duke of York and officials hailed the initiative as the latest in an enduring 200 year plus relationship between the two countries. The establishment reflects the educational sector's ambition to build partnerships with leading international universities and higher education institutions to bring the most reputable programs to the Bahraini student body. The British University of Bahrain is yet another milestone in the roadmap of ongoing cooperation between the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Bahrain. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain International News. His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, visited the Bahrain Financial Technology Center, where he was received by the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Mr. Rashid Mohammed Al Maraj. Prince Andrew toured the center, regarded as the largest financial technology center in the Middle East and Africa. The center is equipped to host 30 financial technology companies. The Duke was briefed on the services provided by the center in the field of financial technology.